Good afternoon, everyone. It feels like we're in sunny Florida today. For the last couple episodes, I was bundled up. I had my jacket, my hoodie, my car hard over my face, and today I'm just rocking the Pinnacle t-shirt because it's like 62 degrees outside, and today I'm gonna give away one of my trade secrets, and that is how do I select my investment projects? Whether it's a knockdown, a long-term buy and hold, uh, or a quick flip, today I'm gonna talk about what the criteria is and how I select my properties. This property really sums up how I sort of approach my operation. So this house is gonna be knocked down, it's gonna be leveled, it's gonna be room for a brand new house. And I built a house around the corner. I had heard from a neighbor that uh, the person who owned this home had passed away and it was going to some heirs. And politely and persistently, I stayed on top of this lead and I knew exactly what I wanted to do here. I, I did some research, I checked out the lot size and I realized that my Typical five bed, three and a half bath, five bed, three bed, new construction, center hall colonial would fit perfectly on this lot. I'll knock down that garage, free up some backyard space, widen this up. Obviously the whole house is gonna go, but I mean in terms of the footprint, widen this up and build a brand new house here. And there's a few things that are involved in a deal like this. First and foremost, this never hit the market, right? So this hits that off market principle of sourcing your own projects before you have 100 people jumping down your throat bidding on the same property. That's number one. Number two, the numbers have to make sense, right? Uh, if I pay full retail, if I buy somebody's semi-renovated ranch, I'm not gonna make money. I need the worst of the worst. I need the cat lady's house, the old lady special, um, the foreclosure, which is, which is very rare around here. I need something that no one else wants to touch or that an end user can't just get in and sort of fix up and move in. So this property sums up how I select my new construction slash reconstruction homes and what the criteria is to get uh, the right deal. It's been on the market for a little while, you know? I think. I think we kind of got a feel for where the market's at. I'm actually heading over there right now. I'm going to take a look at that property one more time and um, uh, just uh, let's see how they react. Okay. All right. All right. Let me see what I can do and we'll go from there. Thank you. Right. I'll talk Bye. to you soon. Take care. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. They say real estate is the safest investment. So I sort of categorize the investor into three. The first category is the guy who's not really a contractor or a builder. They're a buy and hold kind of person. And they're looking to A, ride the appreciation wave uh, by buying and holding property. And B, in the meantime, get some uh, cash flow through the rent. And they might be financing the purchase of the house. So they're looking to get more than what their borrowing costs plus the taxes are. So um, that's one guy. The second person is the person who is a quick flipper, right? They buy a property distressed at an auction or, um, you know, the same thing that I just referenced, the old lady special, the original home that needs a gut reno and can go right back on the market and you can make a little profit that way. And then there's a third kind of investor and that's the person who's the spec builder or spot builder, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and that's mostly where I fall in, where I'm going to take a property that's in a good school district um, with a tremendous upside in the sense that you could take a four or $500,000 house, knock it down, build a brand new house and sell it for a decent profit. So those are the three categories and everybody's got a different you know, need or want uh, or criteria. So what might work for me as someone that's gonna knock the house on a build new doesn't work for a flipper because that existing little bungalow or ranch doesn't have enough square footage for them to just kind of fix up and put back on the market. And the buy and hold guy is not interested in any of that because he's looking to do minimal work and get some cash on cash return. I still can't believe how beautiful it is. It's actually 60 degrees warmer than it was a week ago. But here we are in front of what I like to call the quintessential flip. This is not exactly my lane. I have a really good friend who's a high-end builder and he's looking to do something to supplement payroll and supplement income and doing these kinds of flips makes sense to him because he's got the manpower already. Also, if you're a beginner flipper, this is an ideal situation because you have the square footage, you have the room sizes, you have the three floors because it's a split, you got the entry, living, dining, kitchen, you got the lower level with a, with a family room, a Florida room and a full bath and then you've got the upper level with the three bedrooms and two baths. So this is perfect for a flipper. You're in a great school district. It's a uh, 8,500 square foot lot and the taxes are reasonable. So this is the kind of deal where you can get in here, do a reno, siding, windows, roofing, 
update the plumbing, update the electrical, please update the plumbing and the electrical. Don't be like everybody else on TV. And then you can do your new kitchens, your new baths, refinish the wood floors. You have a brand new home that's ready to go on the market in just a couple months. So let's go inside, let me show you what it looks like. All right, so we're inside now, and I'm actually involved in this deal. I'm representing the buyer, and just look around. You can see from the furniture, the carpeting, this place is dated, but the second you walk in, you can tell that it's clean, it's got good bones. You've got the hardwood flooring underneath this carpet, so we're gonna pick this all up, skim coat the walls, I'm gonna update the HVAC system, the central air is shot, I looked at that earlier. You've got the condensation in the window, so we're probably gonna change those windows out, get new covers for those radiators, new crown, open this up a little bit. We're gonna take this wall down so you have that open concept kitchen, dining room. This wall is probably gonna come down also. And the plan basically is to wrap this kitchen around this way, reduce the size of that window, put your sink underneath that window, relocate that baseboard, and open this up. Get a nice big island here. You still have your formal dining room over there. And now you gotta go to your two living spaces. You've got your bedrooms above. You've got your family room, your full bath, and all that below. Let's come up this way. We can salvage these railings. We're gonna refinish these wood floors, okay? Obviously, this paneling's gotta go. Skim coat the walls. Nice big bathroom here. It's in good shape, but we're gonna rip it out. We're gonna do it over. We're gonna bring it into 2019. Again, this paneling comes down. Update this thermostat, look into the heating. We're gonna check out the boiler. There's no gas here. We're definitely converting to gas because that's a major selling feature. This is your master. We're gonna change these windows. You've got a nice big walk-in closet already over there. You've got a tiny master bath, but hey, it's better to have an ensuite than not have one at all. And then we got two more bedrooms on this, this floor, which brings us to three bedrooms and two baths on this floor. Now, what I really wanna see in a flip like this is a fourth bedroom. So where can we squeeze out a bedroom? Let's go downstairs and see if we can find a bedroom downstairs. So I've got this really long family room, right? So uh, I gotta figure out a place to squeeze out a bedroom somewhere. I've got this weird room right here. Let me see if I can find a light. I've got this weird room, check this out. I've got a powder room and a laundry together. So this is not gonna work, obviously. So what I would like to see happen, this is your entrance to the garage. I would like to separate, excuse me, that was horrible. I'd like to separate these two rooms. So what I might do is build a closet over here with a laundry, build a bathroom somewhere over here, and there's an extension that's not connected to this house. Actually, maybe we can actually get through from here. So this room has a CO. This is, a, this is sort of like a summer Florida room type of deal, but it's got a CO. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna file for a permit here and we're gonna convert this to living space. We're gonna get heat over here, we're gonna insulate it properly, and now you could definitely have a large fourth bedroom. You could have a full bath over here where I'm gonna kinda move around the washing machine and um, the powder room right now. And let's just say for a mother-daughter or for someone looking for a little bit of supplemental income, this could be an ideal setup. So, I mean, look, you've got the bones, right? You've got the structure. You just gotta do the work now. You even got a basement over here. Some splits don't have a basement this large, but this is actually a good size. I don't have any lights down here. So Matt, you're gonna have to work your magic a little bit, but you've got this big room down here. I'm gonna clear everything out. I wanna water vapor barrier the walls. I wanna rip up this old tile. I wanna address any water issues if there are any. I'm gonna rip out that oil tank, rip out that boiler, brand new heating system, change these basement windows. And once you open this space up, this is gonna be an awesome play area for the kids. Now let's go check out the property outside to see what kind of curb appeal we can get. I don't even see what's here right now. I only see what can be. You've got this huge driveway, it's double car wide. We're gonna pave this as well. We're gonna rip this all up, redo this driveway, fix up that walkway, new stoop, new siding. Might even be able to save this siding, do some new capping, change the windows, do some cultured stone over that brick, or maybe even power wash that brick and get it fixed up. Stucco this foundation. This is that extension, that Florida room here. So this could easily be Resided, insulated, new windows, made into living space. And you've got a nice big property. It's got a nice big fenced in backyard. Fix up this patio. Really give them some nice indoor, outdoor living spaces over here. And when you're all set and done, this is all gonna be PVC fenced, landscaped, flower beds, shrubs, the whole bit. 
And this thing could really be something nice with room for grandma, grandpa, extended family, mother, daughter, whatever you need, it could happen here. And that brings us to our last category, the buy and hold. Can this person now buy this property in the forest, fix it up, rent it out, get $4,000 a month, and then sit tight and sell it seven, eight, nine, 20 years from now? Absolutely. So there's opportunities out there, even in this market, there's opportunities. And if you're looking to get into something like this and you're in the Long Island, New York area, I'm your guy. And let's clarify one thing, okay? If you're that quick flip guy, the days of making 100 or 150,000 on the flip are over, okay? In this market, you're gonna buy this house, you're gonna renovate it, maybe you borrowed money from a bank, you got a loan on this house, maybe you got hard money, maybe you pulled some money together with some private investors, but when it's all said and done, you pay all those people back, and you do a flip like this, you spend three, four, five months, six months, maybe a little bit longer, don't expect to make more than 60 or 70,000 on something like this. You're not gonna make 100 or 150,000 unless you do this every day, you've got the cruise, you've got a low entry cost, low cost of capital. It's just not gonna happen. But if you do a couple of these a year and you got something else going on the side or a full-time job or a part-time job even, you can make a good living, you can survive. But, but the days of, 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 of making a killing or just speculating and flipping properties as is, contract to contract, under the table, over the table, it's over. It's all pipe dreams. It's all for those entrepreneurs on Instagram. And on that note, if you don't already follow me on Instagram, I put stuff like this out there every single day. At Pinnacle Real Estate is my handle. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do so. And please don't forget to leave a comment and a like. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you for watching.